everyone, and welcome to Meow Mix, the Carolina Panthers podcast. My name is Steven. My name is Jerry. And today we've got a special guest with us, our first returning guest of the Meow Mix podcast. From Sports Illustrated, covering the Panthers, Jason Hewitt. What's up, man? Thanks for joining us. Welcome back. Hey, appreciate it. It's good to be back. I missed y'all, man. I missed (laughs) y'all. Well, we've missed you too, but we've been keeping up with you, writing some great stuff on SI. Kind of funny that we had you on this week. We talked a little last week about some free agents that are coming up for the Panthers and uh, dovetail it a little bit with one of your more recent articles about the future core of the Panthers. Um, so we'll talk about that article here in a minute, but uh, anything else you want to bring up before we kind of get it started? Um, I mean, it's good to be here. Um, be sure to follow us at SI underscore Panthers on Twitter. Follow me at Jason Hewitt 50 on Twitter and be sure to read our stuff at on www.si slash nfl slash panthers there you go there you go that's pretty much it man so we're going to talk about the denver broncos visiting your carolina panthers we'll kick it off as we always do with the injury reports and as usual with the panthers there's some big names on here um did not practice dennis daly guard russell douglas corner marquise haynes defensive end and this is not including by the way all the guys that are on the covid list which we released our emergency COVID podcast yesterday or Tuesday. So check that out if you're not sure who those names are. Um, Sam Franklin, limited practice. Dante Jackson, limited practice. Christian McCaffrey, limited practice. And then FA Obata listed as a full participant in practice with a knee. The key name here to me is Christian McCaffrey showing up not only with a shoulder, but also a thigh. Mm-hmm. Where did the thigh injury come from? It's a quad injury that he got today or sometime during last week and this week. Jason, do you know anything about that? I would assume that it happened during practice, either that or he was doing one of his crazy workouts and it happened. (laughs) Because I know especially like in recovery, like sometimes you push a little too hard, Mm. overworking muscles that shouldn't be overworked, especially with his injury. So So are you concerned about that or you think he'll be available? I think he's going to suit up. All right. I agree. He wants to get out there. I did. I think he's going to force everything he do, can to be out there. I agree. He's He has that Luke Keekley DNA. Yeah. There you go. Uh, for the Broncos, uh, we'll do our best here with, with what we have. Jerry Judy's list is questionable. Uh, he's saying Bassey corner is on IR. DeMar Dotson, questionable. Mar- Malik Reed, questionable. Mark Barron, questionable. And Trey Marshall, questionable. Um, none of their, other than Judy, who really isn't a huge part of that offense, uh, no huge names there. All right. We're going to go ahead and get into the stats of the Broncos. They at only average 18.8 points per game, second lowest in the league. Um, they do it mostly through the ground. They average 118 yards per game on the ground and only 206 through the air. Now we do have to take in that one game where they had to start a training or a practice Practice squad squad. receiver as a quarterback. And I think they only got five yards passing. So (laughs) take that. Uh, Their defense is stout, uh, but they do give up 26.7 points per game, 131 yards on the ground and 218 through the air. So they're really good against the, passing attack and they average 2.7 sacks per game so teddy might need to keep his lookout their red zone defense is really good they're only allowing touchdowns on 47 percent of red zone drives which is second in the nfl that's uh, up really up till recently been one of the panthers achilles heels on offense is scoring in the red zone they did have a, a few game stretch there where they were scoring pretty much every time in the red zone, but it <laughs> seems like the last couple of games been a lot of turnovers in the red zone for the Panthers and, you know, a, a little more field goal action than we'd like to see. So um, Jason, I'm going to kick it to you. What do you think the key to the Panthers winning this game is going to be? Find every single way possible to man, uh, what's the word? contain Melvin Gordon. If you can't stop Melvin Gordon, it's a wrap. I'm sorry. I, if he runs, here's my prediction. If he rushes for over 100, I 
it, it's going to be a long day for this team. Mm. And I can honestly see him running for 100, especially with this COVID list. And if maybe like one or two of these guys on defense mm-hmm. are out, it's going to be a long day. Yeah, because that's like the entire interior of our defensive line. Yeah, I mean, because you mentioned Zach Kerr a little earlier in the podcast. I've been mm-hmm. super impressed with him, just kind of coming out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. It was it's funny because he was one of those guys that Matt Rule brought out. It was kind of that that nepotism joke mm-hmm. of you know, oh, that's his boy from one of his old schools, and he just brought him along. But he's actually turned out to be one of the bright spots of his defense. So it's pretty cool to see. Absolutely. Yeah, when him and Derek Brown started like getting gelled together, the run game or the run defense really started to improve. Mm-hmm. Which is good to see, especially out of a young team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the I Broncos... agree. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going <laughs> to say, stopping the running game is key one. In my, like he said, I mean, they have Melvin Gordon and Phillip Lindsay averaging 4.6 yards per game. So. Mm-hmm. Whenever you're out there and they're running the ball, you're going to get a fresh back coming at you. Yes, you Yep. And I was going to mention Philip Lindsay. He's one of those types of backs I think the Panthers historically have struggled with. Just a small, fast guy that gets under your skin. You know, just always the Panthers have trouble with those kind of guys. So hopefully – uh, and as you said, Jerry, the defense, you know, pat, uh, rush defense has been – okay the last several weeks um even against like uh dalvin cook you know only Mm -hmm. allowing him to get what 61 yards i think on the ground in that game that's that's impressive if they're able to stop melvin gordon and philip Lindsay, that i feel like they'd win this game convincingly but if not which i don't see happening it's gonna be a long day drew like likes to make a lot of mistakes especially if he gets under pressure he showed it against Kansas City last week, and I'm hoping Brian Burns can kind of get in his face, start swiping at him, and make him make those throws where he just lobs it up for a, his receiver. But with Phil Snow's defensive preference of playing, you know, blanket coverage, I'm hoping some of our guys can pick him off. I'd hope so too, but at the same time, like if you send those blitzes, do you trust the secondary to make those plays? especially if Jerry Judy plays, because make no mistake, Jerry Judy might not be the offensive rookie of the year or anything like that, but that guy is still a stud, and that man will tear these corners up with his route running. Mm-hmm. So you cannot sleep on these guys. Yeah, you look at Denver, and you know you see they're 4-8, and eight and they're just yeah. not super exciting on paper, but they do have a lot of skilled players, and you know Drew Locke at, at quarterback – Again, and I, you look at the stats, nine touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Doesn't seem like he's doing a lot, um, but he makes some plays on occasion. I think that that, that offense, they like to get aggressive uh, throwing the ball. We saw that if you watched the Kansas City game. Uh, you saw it a few times where they, you know, he threw it deep when he probably shouldn't have and got picked mm-hmm. twice by the Honey Badger. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping that the Panthers can – when those opportunities come, because I feel like they will come, they get they gotta capitalize. I think to me, the key of this game is gonna be creating turnovers, getting extra possessions, and capitalizing on those possessions. Uh, Drew Lock, by the way, he while throwing in the pocket, completes just fifty seven percent of his passes for a QB rating of sixty three point eight. When he bootlegs or gets out of the pocket completing 84% of his passes Ooh. for a QB rating of 146. What? So guess what they're going to try to do? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Watch for the play action. Mm-hmm. Panthers. I, Phil yeah. Snow. Jerry, any other thoughts on the game here? Um, so with Christian McCaffrey, hopefully being back, do you see a big ground game for him this week since Broncos – Pass defense is so good, and their run defense kind of sucks. <laughs> mm-hmm. I I mean, it's it's crazy. Like you see, this is my thing with Joe Brady. Like it's frustrating when you have a guy like Christian McCaffrey. You want to give him the ball all the time. Is the Swiss Army knife? He's yeah. When he's on, he's the best running back in the NFL. So, I mean, you you would want to refrain from like giving him like 25, 30 touches. 
But at the same time, it's Christian McCaffrey, man, which is also kind of why he's been injured a lot this season, in my opinion. So I would like to see him spread it out a little bit, but I'm highly expecting them to just run Christian McCaffrey over and over and over again. <laughs> now, I brought this up on our last podcast, the the emergency podcast with uh, COVID, with perhaps Co- uh, Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore being out. Mm-hmm. I made the suggestion, as since Mike Tom- Davis has already been running back for a while, so maybe even throw Christian McCaffrey out there in the slot or as a receiver a few downs and let Davis be the back since he is such a good route runner, especially for a running back. Interesting take. I would I would like to see that. On hmm. That would be a good idea. That was my uh reaction. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, huh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, that's I mean, cool and too. that's only if those two are down. I'm not saying put yeah, him in. Yeah, if you... they are down, exactly. Wow, because you got to think, okay, you got. Because then you're looking at Pharaoh Cooper starting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, nothing against Pharaoh Cooper. Nothing He's a good Pharaoh return Cooper, guy, but. Yeah, let's just let's just keep it honest. That's not <laughs> a starting wide receiver. In the league. I mean, I'd give it a shot. I'd throw him in, and if he's like successful early and then keep on going with them at the slot. That sounds like a really good idea, actually. At least, you know, give them a few looks like that, right? I mean, mm-hmm. just to see how he matches up against the defense. Yeah. And a worst case scenario, you give another team in the future more tape to watch, even yeah. if you don't run it. Pretty much, yeah. The last time that McCaffrey played, which is a very sad thing to say because it's been so long. He's only played three games this year, and the Panthers, unfortunately, are 0-3 when he plays. But you have to wonder, if he'd have been healthy all year, what the Panthers' record would be because it seems like, you know, as we talked about in a lot of these games, we're like a play or two away. And you put McCaffrey in there, especially in these games where we've had trouble scoring. You know, in the red zone with McCaffrey, we're so much better, so much more dynamic. There's so many more things we can do. Um you just wonder what the Panthers would be with McCaffrey healthy the whole season. But what I wanted to ask you was when the last time he played, Jerry and I had a beer bet where we wanted to know, would McCaffrey have more receiving yards or more rushing yards in that game? Okay. So I think in this game, I'd also like to know that not, not necessarily as a beer bet, but what do you think more rushing or receiving yards for McCaffrey in this game? I'd say more rushing yards. Yeah. Because their rushing defense really isn't that impressive to me. I think it's going to, to me, going to depend on how the game goes. Like, are the Panthers in control of the game? Or does Teddy turn it over a couple times? And all of a sudden we find ourselves down 10 and need to get back into the game. And then we get into a rhythm. And um, I think I would go receiving just because I went receiving last time and it won me a beer. So hey. uh, <laughs> <laughs> consistency. Okay. What do you think, Jerry? Uh, I'm going to go receiving too, just because Joe Brady seems to really abandon the run quite easily, <laughs> even when it's running well. Like Mike Davis has had some games where he's averaging five yards a carry. And then in the third or fourth quarter, we may even have a small lead. He decides to throw the ball every down. Mm-hmm. So I've noticed that too, especially in is It brings me back to that Vikings game. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> that's actually thing. the exact game I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah, it's like wow, you really could have ran out the clock. You would have. Wow, now I'm mad again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, especially seeing what happened, like with the Cardinals falling, mm-hmm. and, and now that seventh playoff spot is attainable. You know, if the Panthers would have won that game, it, it's you know, it is frustrating. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get into our predictions. Jerry, uh, you and I were discussing a beer bet earlier. um, Beer bet of the week. (laughs) I don't don't want to step on your bold prediction here or anything, but I think we had settled on one and a half interceptions over under for Drew Locke. I'm going under. And I went over. And why is that, Jerry? Because my bold prediction is Drew Locke throws three interceptions this game. I think we harass him a little bit, and he lobs it up. And I think Phil Snow's kind of 
balloon parachute type of defense can jump up and snag a couple balls. And again, a big portion of this is some of the guys from COVID actually played. Because mm. I am a fearful that if Zach Kerr and Derek Brown are out, they're only going to throw 13 times and they're just going to run <laughs> Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay down our throats. That's obviously a big, big factor in this game. J- Jason, if you had to go over under one and a half interceptions for Drew Locke, for a beer, a beer of your choice, hey, okay. what would you go? Um, I got to go over or under. Yeah, mm-hmm. over under one and a half. Um, <laughs> over, whatever. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And, and we forgot to say, since we are doing this remotely now, uh, the beer bet no longer is a beer. Next week, I am going to have to speak with an English accent for five <laughs> minutes at the beginning of the podcast if I lose, or Stephen will have to. And since he does okay. the intro, I really hope it is him. <laughs> Tell you what, if I if I I'll, I'll establish it now. The next time I'm on this podcast, if I lose the bet, I'll speak in a British accent for the first five minutes. There you go. Yeah. All right, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna make sure that happens. All right. Um, so dang, now I have to root for Drew Lock. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So Steven, Jerry you gave have a bold yeah. prediction. Yeah. So my bold prediction is obviously again caveat. If this guy plays, um, Curtis Samuel. And this is going to be a weird one, guys, okay? okay. I'm going to underline bold for this bold prediction. Curtis Samuel will lead the Panthers in rushing this week. Okay. That is extremely bold. Is I think, you, I think he breaks off a big one uh, early in the game. And I just don't know about McCaffrey. I don't know how healthy he's going to be. I don't know even if he plays. So I'm just going to guess that Samuel is going to lead the team in rushing. I'm going with that bold prediction. There's no, there's no downside here, Jason, if the bold prediction is wrong. They're yeah. always wrong. So. <laughs> I think one time we had like 100 and 100 for Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, yeah. Hundred yeah, rushing, but so. was that really bold? <laughs> no, we might have cheated. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything, Jason, that you think uh, you want to kind of stick your neck out a little bit, make a prediction? Mm-hmm. Bold prediction. Oh, let me mm, both Gordon and McCaffrey go rush for over 100. There you go. Okay. All right. So now we get to the final score predictions. And Jason, I'm going to let you go first. All right. Final score. I've been thinking about it all week. And I'm, I'm looking at the COVID list. That's still TBD. So I'm just going to mm-hmm. assume that like a sprinkling of them actually have it and most of them are able to play. I'd say the Panthers win. Let's go. Thirty-one to twenty. Ah, all right. That's a convincing win. Yeah. Jerry, what you got? I have the Carolina Panthers winning. And and again, the COVID list is so in question that it hurts the yeah. guess. But- mm-hmm. I would go Carolina 24, the Broncos 20. Okay. All right. And I I will make it a sweep here for the Panthers. Carolina 28, Denver 21. We want to thank everyone for listening. We definitely want to thank Jason for stopping by. And you can check him out again at SI.com. And your Twitter handle? At SI underscore Panthers. My personal one is at Jason Hewitt 50. All right. And we want to let everybody know, please follow us on Twitter at Meow Makes Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at mailbag at meowmakespodcast.com. And if you leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, we'll read the comment on the show. We'll be back on Monday morning with our recap of the Carolina Panthers' total destruction of the Denver Broncos. Uh, Until then, everybody stay safe out there and keep pounding. (laughs) 